I was seven years old and went to a local rodeo. It was at Gilbert, Gilbert Day's Rodeo in Gilbert, Arizona. And I don't remember her name. And I was so nervous when she'd look at me or talk to me. And I didn't say anything to her, but I watched her. And uh, she was the Gilbert Day's Rodeo Queen. I remember sitting back and watching her the entire time. I want to be her. I want to be just like her. I want to be. I want my hair big and, and the chaps and the chaps and the horse and, and everything like that and I was blown away and that's what started it for me. At eight years old, I um, taught myself how to use a computer and mom's permission. I researched and looked and I, I found a list of all the horse associations and I broke out pen and pencil and I wrote them all a letter. She's pretty much telling them, I'm eight, I don't know much, and I want to know everything. What you got? And they all sent me packages and, and rule books and pictures and um, went from there. So fast forward a couple of years, Craigslist bought a $500 horse. Not broke, halter broke. I do that. It's all up it's as far as he went, but decided to hook up my friend's horse trailer and um, went pick them up from home. Intimidating at first, I'll tell you that. Uh, he was scared of everything and I was scared to show him everything. <laughs> um, I started taking him places and to public arenas and barrel races and pretty much anything I could before I had even uh, put a saddle on him. I was just taking him, leading him around like a puppy dog to all these places. And, Growing up in this world, you grow up with everybody, you rodeo with everybody, you know everyone, your families know everyone. Well, that wasn't me. I didn't know anybody, and I was showed up with the unbroke $500 paint horse <laughs> through Craigslist, and it, it was intimidating. There was a lot of people that looked at me like, what is she doing here? Who is she? What, you know, what, she doesn't even ride. She's not even riding the horse, but, you know. But there were... A lot of people that saw me struggling with him in a lot of different ways and um, wanted to help me. We built, I built a lot of friendships from not knowing what I was doing with that $500 paint horse. We and Julie started competing um, for all races, just local stuff. Um, Tuesday night barrel practice. Uh, time only, things like that. Um, it was it was hard. It was it was fun though. We didn't give up. We knew what we wanted and, and that was we built such a relationship and a trust there that he would do anything for me. We got it down, we got the pattern down. Um, we tried our hearts out. But at the end of the day, as much as I loved him, he didn't have the speed. He was he was a um, big stocky short little paint horse. He didn't have, he had the heart, he just didn't have the speed for it. So I went from a $500 gentle giant from Craigslist um, and to a horse they call shithead <laughs> that nobody wanted that they gave to me because they just didn't want to deal with me. Months on the ground, uh, a lot of time building trust, building a relationship, getting him to trust me that, that everything was going to be okay. We really went from there. We started barrel racing. Our first barrel race that we went to, we practiced at home. Uh, well, my friend's house where I boarded him. We practiced for weeks on end, the pattern, just showing him the pattern. Um, and as soon as I decided to put the speed to the pattern, uh, a couple of girlfriends were going to uh, barrel race. And they're like, let's just go. It's a five feet. No big deal. Just show them. You got to get them out. You got to get them going. Okay. First barrel race we went to, one five feet buckle. I'm so proud of myself on that. And I wore that buckle everywhere. I still wear it. But I mean, it just it went there. It went from there. Um, shithead, now named Shooter. <laughs> Renamed him. <laughs> um, 
he's been my barrel horse, my drill team horse, my parade horse. Um, he's uh, been multiple rodeos everywhere. He's done everything with me and for me. Uh, he's a great relationship, and he, no doubt in my mind, he was lost in five years. So fast forward a couple years, um, living in a house with two rodeo queens um, who also barrel raise, and uh, one heard about an opportunity. Hey, Navajo County uh, is looking for a rodeo queen. I told them about you, and they're interested. So she gave them my number. She called me up, and we talked a little bit. And uh, she said, "Are you in?" And I said, "I'm in." Uh, but that being said, um, I was in a relationship at the time, and um, he was all but supportive of the idea. So this lifestyle has cost me a few things. But at the time, uh, 22 years old, I was dating this guy who I thought, who swore, would put money on it. I mean, he was the one. Um, he was everything that I thought I was looking for. Um, he told me, it's your dream for me. So. I packed up everything I owned that night in the bed of my truck after he went to work and went and got my horses and went to breakfast. Never talked to him again. I was pretty sure two and a half years with this man that he was going to be a woman in Being 22 years old, I uh, thought I knew everything. I knew exactly who I was. Well, uh, I was wrong, and that's okay. Because there's, there's not anybody out there that is going to tell you that they love you and not support what you love and what makes you you. Because my dreams and how I got to where I was was what made me who I was, who he was supposed to be in love with. You take that away, who am I? It doesn't work like that. So, so after achieving uh, being Navajo County Rodeo Queen, I. Uh, I started uh, performing with a local drill team, um, Southwest Arizona Sisters Incorporated, and um, it was a family. We did a lot of charity work, we worked with a lot of kids, we, uh, we formed at a lot of rodeos, um, went from there, kept up with that for a while, and at the time, you know, I still rode horses, I'd exercise horses for people. Arizona, it's, it's way too hot for, for most people to be out in 115 in the shade. So I was working other people's horses for them. Um, I was on the drill team, I was still traveling, uh, still barrel racing, getting back into that. And I sit back a lot and think about my eight-year-old self. At the beginning of the story, I told you about a little girl that taught herself how to use a computer and sent mail to the association looking for any information she could get and wanting to be a rodeo queen and dreaming about traveling and owning her own horse and doing her own thing and being out on the road and I've done that. I'm here. I made it. And I think she would be proud of me. 